don't Hello. Hello? Hello, Hello. talk. Hello, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm in South Carolina. I do have a quick question about conditioning training. I know you're pretty anti that, but uh, I'm not. I'm not anti conditioning. I am anti letting it interfere with strength training. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. But right. uh, I, I still need to do that, and I just kind of wanted your your take on when I should be programming that. As long, why do you as need well to do as doing strength training. Why, why do you, you need, need to do that? Because uh, I'm in the military and I have to be able to run certain distances. Yeah, we we've dealt with this so many times. Uh, how many times a year are you tested? <laughs> All right, how many? You got two tests a year, right? Yes, sir. You know when the test dates are? Yes, yes, I do. All right, then what you do is uh, 14 days before the test, you run the prescribed distance. Ten days before the test, you do it again. Five days before the test, you do it again, and then you take the test. And then you stop running and go back to training. That's how you do it. Conditioning is a very short-term effect. It's acquired quickly, and it is lost quickly. So if we know that it comes on fast, it's acquirable in a short period of time, then we don't spend a bunch of time doing it because it directly interferes with our strength adaptation. Strength comes on slowly. It can be built for years. Conditioning comes on very quickly. That's why two-a-days work in high school football. Okay? So my advice to you is to find out your test days, count back, do three runs in preparation for the test, take the test, and forget it ever happened until it's next time to do that again. Would you say that in those 14 days that I should still be doing strength training or in that specific scenario? Uh, just like cut, cut about half of your strength training out. All right. Cool. Thanks for the call, man.